Well, I was just looking at the um, placards, and we'll call them placards, come long expected, which really ties in with what we're talking about, I want to talk about today. I want to talk about Advent, that is the Messiah's mission. When we think about the coming of Christ, uh, our Lord and Savior, we think about the prophecies that were given about the coming of the Messiah, and we think from the conception to the resurrection of Jesus that he was on a mission. He was on a mission as Messiah. And that God, in his great wisdom, which doesn't always match up with our wisdom by any stretch of the imagination because God oftentimes to us is not logical. And the birth of Jesus is not logical. Uh, It is not logical in this great event and with little or no announcement other than to a couple of individuals, as I mentioned last week, that Gabriel came. But it is what the birth of Christ, uh, the, the child being born unto us, the prophets foretold of a son being born of a virgin, and that he would continue to sit on the throne of David and the increase of his government, there is no end. In our political setting today, that last part, uh, some would be in favor of and others wouldn't, the increase of government, because we live in a world where government is just so chaotic uh, now, around the world. It is absolutely so chaotic. But when we think about the increase of the government of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, it's, it, this, is, this is awesome. And this is wonderful because his government is in righteousness and holiness. So the birth of Jesus is part of the prophecy not to be overlooked. And it's something that we need to be excited about and appreciate in the season. I was just thinking as my wife was praying over the offering, she mentioned about the season that that where we rejoice. You know, it's hard to enjoy fall in springtime. Yeah, I got you looking, Jeanette. What do you mean, enjoy fall in springtime? It is. It's hard. It's hard to enjoy spring in the fall or winter in the summer. There are seasons for things. And, uh, you know, if just one tree kind of got the fall look and the other one got the spring look and the other had the winter look. And, uh, but no, it's, it, there's a collectiveness uh, that we find in a season. And we think about the collectiveness of the world, uh, of Christianity, uh, celebrating uh, the birth of Christ and how that looks and how that looks to God in terms of us appreciating what he did. Uh, from the very foundation. So in Luke 1, God sent an angel to explain the conception, the birth, the, the authority, and the name of Jesus. In that, we, he sent the angel Gabriel. Now, Gabriel's an interesting angel to send because he is used uh, in several times to explain the things of God. Uh, which they would not understand otherwise. For example, in Daniel 11, Daniel, I'm, in Daniel 8, rather, verses 15 through 19. I just put this in here just for your collective information. Daniel has this vision, and he isn't able to explain it. And here comes Gabriel. Gabriel comes along and explains to Daniel the particulars about the vision that he had. He gives him answers to things that he would not understand otherwise. Then the same Gabriel in Daniel chapter 9 talks about the 70 weeks prophecy. Now, if you know, understand, it's, it's about the coming of the Messiah. It's about being cut off in the midst of the week. But he explains that as well to Daniel. Now, it is the same Gabriel in Luke chapter 1 who comes to the birth of John. And he explains to Zechariah and Elizabeth in Zechariah in particular, about the birth, and he tells him about what John is going to do, that he's going to go before the Lord and Savior, he's going to prepare a way, he's telling him all these things. The same Gabriel then appears to Mary, and he begins to explain things that about what God is doing in her life, 
how God views her, that God has views, viewed her with great favor and the like. And then he, he tells her about who he is. He tells her about what he's going to do. He tells her, then answers a question that's an impossible question. Well, how can this happen because I'm not known man? He explains that to Mary. And so we see here all this focuses on who Jesus is, and it focuses on his mission. For example, it says you, you shall call his name Jesus. He explains there in Luke also, he is the son of the highest. He explains that he will be given the throne of David. He explains of his kingdom, there'll be no end. It's with these things in mind we want to take a look at. He's laying out, as it were, the mission of the Messiah. Because Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is what we, looking back, that we celebrate the coming of our Lord and Savior, but look at, as they were looking forward, they were looking forward to the Messiah. Now, I want to go through today um, Jesus' ministry and kind of look at how that he fulfilled his mission, the mission of the Messiah. And we're going to take a look at his ministry and what he did and how that impacts our lives. Because in all the things which God has laid out, every step of the way, it has impacted the lives of human beings in an incredible and a wonderful way for all of us. When we think about, for example, birth, and uh, as, as women, you understand about caring a child, about the birthing of a child, about the instant love of a child, all of these things. God in his incredible wisdom and grace has given us also as human beings the opportunity to know what it's like to have children, to love children, to see the innocence of children and who they are. And of course, Jesus in his, in his teaching reminds us unless we become like little children, we're not part of the kingdom of God. There's an incredible valuable lessons. But I want to start with in terms of the advent, the coming of Jesus. It is the coming of the Messiah and his mission. I want to take a look in the book of Luke at what Jesus himself says about this. Because in his mission, it was to fulfill prophecies. Now, is that the only reason Jesus came, is to fulfill a prophecy, something that is written? No, there's a whole lot more to fulfilling prophecy than just, oh, I'm going to say the things I need to say, I'm going to be what I need to be. It is about the incredible work that God is doing in all of our lives. But I want to begin here in Luke chapter 4 and verse 14, because this is after Jesus had been tempted, he'd been out in the desert, he had come back and he was in speaking in great power with the, with, through the Holy Spirit. It says here in verse 14 of Luke chapter 4, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and the news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. Now, you talk about excitement. These people were excited about what Jesus was doing. And he went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found a place where it is written. So we find this is purposeful. It's just not that I'm going to read something from Isaiah, but this is what I'm going to read specifically from the book of Isaiah, which is a prophecy from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. And here's what Jesus read. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, to recover a sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say by saying to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, this is a prophecy, and it is about the Messiah. It is about the coming of the Messiah and, and what the Messiah would do. And so he's, he brings it up to date. I think it's important for us to recognize because we can 
think nothing but future and not enjoy the, the moment and the presence of God in that particular moment what Jesus was doing. The world today is a challenging environment for Christian believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Looking for answers? Grace Communion International local churches in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto offers a comforting environment for Christians in search of spiritual growth and development. Contact a local ministry. Attend a local GCI churches at the times listed on your screen.